We'd like to welcome our fans watching around the world on Unilad here at the World Pool Series. We're coming to you from Steinway Billiards in Queens, New York City. Beautiful day, Saturday afternoon here in New York City. Bit chilly, but still sunny. And it's going to be a great day inside here at Steinway. Deliberate. Uh, whether Jason played on the time clock or not, I don't think the time clock is going to affect yeah. him much anyway. But uh, it's going to, since he, uh, uh, Clinty is, uh, uh, they say, a little bit more deliberate player. I haven't seen him play yet, but I, I'm really anxious to see him play. Yeah, it's always uh, good when you uh, hear about and then see one of these uh, young rising stars. Open. And he certainly is one of the bright lights uh, coming up in pool. And this is what's so great about our game. We have players um, nowadays coming from uh, every nook and cranny of the world. Uh, I mean, who would think Albania? But uh, I, was at, I was talking to him earlier. And he said they have quite a vibrant scene over there in Albania. They they have a small, a lot of smaller coin-operated tables. He was telling me, but with the with the these size pool balls, and uh, he's uh, really. Uh, I mean, this is a, a big step up for, for the young Albanian. So this should be fun. Dry break. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Jason comes to the table with a pretty nice layout to get on the board first. Uh, uh, He's down to uh, five stripes, uh, and uh, he's left himself uh, a little tougher than maybe I would have uh, thought. I, I think he might have been planning on that cue ball coming back a little further, and uh, I guess he's looking at cutting that 11 ball on the side. It looks pretty thin from where we're sitting, uh, Ted. Ten seconds. Ten. I think your point, Nick, about Jason, having played on this table several times, uh, this is a different table. First of all, it's a different brand of table. This is a Rasson table. It's the only one in this room. and uh, But specifically, the speed and the pocket size, I believe the outside tables are slightly bigger pockets. Slightly. But, again, it's the, and it's also the atmosphere, isn't it? I mean, you've had tons of experience with this uh, uh, how do you get used to the TV arena? Just get out there and <laughs> well, I swing always, away? Well, uh, I just act like nobody was in the room. I, I just uh, concentrated on my next shot and forgot about everything else. I just, uh, uh, I was always lucky. Concentration just come pretty natural for me. Yeah. But I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Uh, uh, this table being a little tighter with the time clock, uh, I'm really anxious to see uh, Clinty get a chance to uh, pocket a few balls here. But it's not going to be this game, I don't think. You are correct, my friend. Jason Shaw quickly on the board. Because if you remember right, uh, the last tournament in January when Ruslan won, uh, he opened up in one of these last two matches. I forget which one with uh, six racks in a row and pretty well <laughs> won the match right after the flip. Yeah. That's not going to happen in this tournament. You're going to have to grind it out one rack at a time. Yep. Mr. Kachi, the table is open. Dry break, so... Clenty Kachi will have his choice. That's the other one. Rule change. Take what you make. Normally, an eight ball, if you're playing in the WPA rules, would be uh, you get to choose. Even if you make a stripe, you could choose solids. In this case, you must take what you make. Now, here, nothing was down, so he has his choice. Open table. Well, he picked the stripes, I think, for... Uh one big reason you see the three and the eight on over by the left corner pocket and then uh, and then uh, down here he's got I can't tell quite what he can do with the nine he may play it in the side pocket just float forward here and play it in the side pocket and uh, this is the biggest challenge and boy that's good position there even I think I can make that nine ball on the side <laughs> And uh, he's got them laying pretty nice here. Uh, if he can make this nine and get position on one of these uh, three stripes, he should be out here. So 
We'll see how his nerves are today. Well, after he solved that problem on the nine ball, it's starting to look uh, it's starting to look awful easy uh, with these last four stripes. Uh, it looks like he really doesn't have to do anything uh, too difficult from here, except just stay in position. He didn't look like he had any nerves. I was talking to him for a few minutes, about 20 minutes before the match began, and he is just as calm as could be. You know, that's the beauty of youth, isn't it, uh, Nick? Yes, Sometimes it, yes, they, they don't, uh, young guys don't even realize uh, the situation they're in. They just have ice in their veins. You remember well, that, Nick? When were, you, when, were, when were you playing? Uh, at, what were you doing at 18? 18, I was going to college at Purdue University. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think I, I love that story. You, you told me that, that you actually put yourself through college by playing pool, picking the pockets of all the other students. Well, not so much. Just the students, but a lot of guys uh, <laughs> from the pool rooms. Nicely done from Clint Uh uh They're just classic tables. Fantastic. People, they got those rosewood rails, and they just phenomenal equipment. Uh, uh, I was really lucky they had such a nice billiard room. And, you know, that may be the oldest billiard tournament in the nation, that tournament's been going on since the 40s, the uh, Collegiate Championship, National Collegiate Championship. Wow. And you won that. The table is when open. I was a junior and senior, I won that national championship. Fantastic. Well, nothing down. So there's an idea, uh, example for you of how tough that break shot is from those uh, small boxes on the side there. Yeah, we've had uh, three uh, breaks, and we've had uh, uh, th uh, not a ball's been made on the break yet. Uh, and uh, looks like uh, Jason's going to pick the uh, the stripes here. And uh, thirty second shot clock is in effect. You'll sometimes hear our timekeeper Julie. It's also a pretty good pool player. Yeah, I saw her play when I was here in January, and you're right. Uh, she hits that pocket pretty good herself. I was playing her a little bit yesterday on the practice table. I didn't get many shots. <laughs> we'll pay attention to the, this match today. Pick yeah. up a couple <laughs> pointers, Ted. Maybe you'll get her today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now he's got... Uh, he's got... Uh, this, uh, these two stripes here on this lower rail, the 9 and the 15, uh, uh, it looks like he uh, needs to get in there. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's looking to play the 9 now and bump the 15 out. And uh, uh, let's see what develops here. Very nice. Uh, I don't know if he can... He can play this green ball, the 10 ball, or the 15 from here. I can't tell which one he's going to elect to take. He could shoot any one of the three, I think. He's probably not going to pick the 15 because he'll be running into balls, and it's a little hard to control him. He's going to go with the 10 here. And he's hitting that pocket good. And, you know, when I got here at 1030 this morning, this is a 12 o'clock round. Jason was uh, <coughs> practicing already, and uh, he was bearing down. Uh, uh, he really wants this tournament. Uh. Well, yeah, he's a little more serious today than I've uh, uh, seen him, and uh, I think you're exactly right, Nick. He yeah, really he, wants to win this. Well, he, I think uh, he's down to the... Uh, semifinals and uh, this match and the next one uh, he'll walk away with the uh, first prize and I think that's uh, I think that's foremost in the uh, front of his mind and uh, wow what great speed he's really got that cue ball uh, he's really got good speed control there that was nice and sure yeah. enough, I mean, look who's in the other semifinal. Darren Appleton's in the other semifinal. He was yeah. there also. 
Yeah, well, Darren won that tournament a couple years ago. Uh, he took the top prize, which uh, I understand was about 100000 That's right. And I, I also understand that they're going to double that prize money next year. So that's, that's really growing there in China. And you're going to see a lot of the pros get Chinese eight ball tables uh, for themselves in their own house so they can practice. Okay, now Jason's made the wrong one here. He made Touching the cue ball on the break and uh, the and uh, wrong ball. Yep. So ball in hand behind the line, and uh, you heard John Lehman it's in, in pool parlance called the kitchen. Any area behind the line. Of course, he has to shoot a ball. He has to shoot the cue ball outside the line. Yeah, he'll shoot a ball outside that kitchen area. And uh, the rest of the time when you get cue ball in hand, you get to place the uh, cue ball any place on the table, but not on the opening break. And he's uh, elected to take the solids. And uh, I think the toughest thing about this rack is he needs to remove at seven to make a pocket for that uh, pink four on the same side of the table. It may have to go in the same pocket. So uh, what he may do here is uh, he may go one, seven, two, and then go up for that four. Seven. To me, the critical part of running this whole rack out is to get that pink ball that's blocked by the seven. And he fell right in the gap between these two stripes. He's going to play the seven. And then uh, he's either going up for the ball on the side. He'll probably, <laughs> this next shot, he'll <clears throat> when he plays a two, Ted, he'll probably be trying to float where he could get position on any of the three balls left, the solids. And uh, But he'd like to get a good way to finish here is play the ball first in the side and then play the pink. Oh, no, he's going right up for that uh, ball right now. And he's went a little further than he wanted because uh, he would have liked to fall and straight in on that ball on the side where he could have tapped it in and drew back just a little bit for that four ball in the same pocket he made the seven in. And then he'd have two balls close to the pocket to finish the rack, the two and Ten the, seconds. Two and the three. And uh, this tournament's a, a little different uh, on this table. They're using the 30-second time clock. And uh, on after the break, you get an additional, uh, is it uh, 30 seconds or 15? No, uh, 30 seconds. And you so get you one get extension per rack. And one extension per rack. So on the open, right after the break, you get 60 seconds. And uh, gives you a little time because... Uh, Usually the most thinking you have to do is uh, making your choice or else figuring out how you're going to run the whole rack. Because if you just start shooting without a plan, usually uh, you end up uh, with a recipe for uh, disaster. Now, that's not what he wanted there. He wanted to play that pink four. And remember, Ted, I said that pink four was going to be the key to this rack and now he has to go so far uh, to get position on the pink ball. It's easy to lose the cue ball in this seconds. shot. Ten. And uh, and uh, he's going to need to shoot pretty soon here. He, he better be extension. careful. He oh, called an he's extension. Got an extension, so he's okay. <laughs> I thought for a minute he forgot about the time clock, Ted, but. Uh, Okay, this is going to be an important position shot here. Oh, I think he snuckered himself. So, uh, big, big error there. And uh, Boy, that's a, a textbook example of what not to do. As you always talk about, Nick, you don't want to keep it simple. The KISS principle. Don't move that cue ball around if you don't have to. He had to because he ran out of position. But you always talk about that. Try to get the balls on one end of the table and then go down Ten to the seconds. other. And don't go back and forth. And well, he's either curving it or jumping it with his playing cue. He's curving it. And, uh, and uh, 
That's a first real mistake he's made in this match, and uh, that's a big mistake because uh, uh, he's down two to one, and now Jason uh, has a chance to extend that lead to three to one. And uh, I knew that four ball, that was a ball you needed to get out as quickly as possible. The rest of the balls were pretty easy, but that four ball, as it turned out, he uh, ended up snookering himself. This might not be, oh wow. Oh wow. He's gonna have to move that cue ball now. There, <clears throat> he may, oh I see what he's gonna do. He's just gonna snooker him here. He's gonna tap this stripe and snooker him. Uh, <clears throat> Cause he don't have much of a shot to pocket. I mean, anything down table is a monster. You see where Ten he's got seconds. his tip pointed. Ten That's seconds. where he, he wants to tap this stripe and send a cue ball. <coughs> toward the corner pocket Extension. right by the spot he put his tip so that he snookers him on the five. Now, if he does that, then uh, Clinty will have a chance to uh, maybe, he, I look for him to play a jump shot here. Uh, you know, he might have left him in the window here. I can't tell from this angle, but he might have failed to, uh, at least from this angle, it looks like he's uh, straight in on the five. Uh, <coughs> Table corner? Maybe I, maybe it's not the case. Maybe the ten's blocking him. I yes, thought, sir. I kind of thought he was going to try to snooker him with the eight there, but uh, maybe he's got him with the ten. But uh, this, uh, this gives Clint. Ten seconds. Clint is a chance here, uh, Ted, to, uh, and. Uh, I think he can hit this. I think he's going to try to make it, go two rails, and play the eight in the left pocket. If he can, oh, no. Foul, illegal wow. contact. Yeah, it's he amazing. couldn't, there was no. He couldn't hit it. Uh, no gap here, there. It looked like he was straight in on it. By the way, you can only use your jump cue if your opponent snookers you. If you snooker yourself, you cannot get out of that with a jump cue. You can jump, but you have to use your full cue. Another rule change. Yeah, most of the rules that they've uh, changed for this tournament, they they really make the game more difficult, and they tend to bring you to the table more often. And so they've taken a lot of the luck out of the game and uh, put more skill in it and made it where you got to focus really focus game after game because you with this alternate to break you can't run five or six racks and uh and uh be in your comfort zone here you got as soon as you win a game <laughs> uh if it's your break you could win two in a row but that's it because then it goes to your opponent so uh Okay, now Jason's laying perfect position here just to slide up and play the eight in the same pocket. And uh, looks like he's going to uh, open up with a two-game lead here, three to one. Yes, indeed. It's a race to six in this first set. Let me go over the rules for you. You know, he's going to have to get uh, – this is – you know, these sets are short, set race to six. So uh, he's got to get back in this right away. He is uh, on the back foot, catchy. The 18-year-old from Albania. Well, he got the one in the side there. The head ball went right in there. And uh, I'm looking to see if he's got a very good shot here. Uh, to cut you on solids. Yeah, he made one solid. So take what you make. No choice. He has to play solids, even if he'd prefer yes, to sir. play stripes. It looks like to me the best shot he may have if he can't hit that ball close to that upper right pocket is play the six on the side. Uh, and uh, that's not an easy opening shot. He's not wasting any time, though. He's going right after it. And uh, right in the center of the pocket. That was a nice opening shot. That was no gimme there. He, uh, he passed a pretty good blood test there, Ted, on that opening uh, shot on the solid. Uh, 
Uh, looks like he may have to, uh, it'd be nice if he could play the five and end up coming across between the five and seven and fall close to stra straight in on the five because uh, uh, I guess he can't even make the pink. I, uh, I thought he had a good shot on that. He's Wow. Great <laughs> pot. Impressive. Very impressive shot. And uh, he's still a little bit. Uh, he's got an easy shot on the two. And he can uh, get on the five. But what he really wants to get on is the seven. I uh, don't know if he can go Ten down seconds. table and uh, spin over toward this rail that the seven balls on or not I uh, can't see the uh, I mean it's easy to play on the, the ball close to the corner there but uh, he really needs to play the seven first boy he came uh, a little too far he's gonna have to uh, I don't think he has any choice though I think he's gonna have to cut the seven in Razor cut it in. And uh, that cue ball's going to be going pretty fast, so uh, uh, playing position on the next ball could be a challenge. Oh, yeah. In fact, the seven turned out to be a challenge. Uh, uh, it was a pretty tough cut, and... Uh, now Jason Shaw comes to the table with the ability to extend that lead four to one. And uh, Catchy didn't really seem to have it together in that wreck. It was always getting away from him. Yeah, he played a pretty good position shot on the seven. The speed was just a little hard. That put him in trouble where he had to cut that ball so thin. And uh, I think he actually cut that ball too thin. And, uh, oh, Jason plays a safety. That's going to be tough. Where does he go from here? He's got to go down and, and back looking, up. Yeah, he's looking uh, to see if he can go two rails and make that ball close to the hole. But he may have to Good shoot start. out, use a lot of low left, and curve it back to make that seconds. ball in the corner either that or he's going to go no he's going to go two rails because he's hitting it with high i guess or else he's trying to make the seven on this other pocket good effort you have to call a shot especially when it's not obvious if it's obvious you don't have to say anything but it is a call shot game you cannot slop the ball in must go in the pocket that you called. Otherwise, it's not a legal shot. In other words, no slop, Ted. That's right. Well, Nick, you really can't give uh, too many chances to a player of the caliber of Jason Shaw. No, because he's made two mistakes, and he's going to find himself, uh, I'm afraid, he's going to be four to one down uh, after the second mistake. And then uh, and uh, Jason's not going to give you any free lunch. He's going to make you pay for every mistake. And your lunch. Outside table, by the way, uh, Darren Appleton leading two to one over the Philippines' Carlo Beato. Boy, boy, that's another great match. That one will lag a bit behind this one. They don't have a shot clock on the outside table. We only have a shot clock here on the TV table. Yeah, my thought was, does that eight go by that solid? Uh, but he doesn't seem overly, no, he's going underneath of it. He hit it and. Uh, oh my, oh, he lost wow. the rack. Well, just a bump in the road for Jason Shaw. Right back up at the table, breaking now. He's one of the few, he moves the ball, cue ball back in that box. 
Any yeah. reason why he does that? Most most guys are putting it up at the top. Well, he does that because you, you can't break board. Ted from the uh, the big box in the middle because it's easier to make a ball, especially the two behind the one ball, the fuller you hit the one ball. And the reason for the small box is to make that tougher to, to make one of those two balls. Well, what he's doing, he's trying to move it back where he can get a little straighter hit and have a better chance to make those two two balls behind the one. And uh, he's been really doing good with it. Uh, but today he's off to a slow start on the break. Uh, last night he was just making them almost every time. But today uh, he seems to uh, uh, be struggling a little bit with making a ball. And uh, Yeah, it was a dry break. And... What a chance now for the 18-year-old Albanian, yes, Klenti Kachi, to get right back in the match and tie it up. Well, now he's playing this long shot on the 14. Uh, I guess the six is not in the way, and he may knock this uh, solid in at the same time. Oh, wow. He, I was thinking about that, so but I've been fooled so many times. I thought that... Uh, Six ball was close to the line to the pocket that it might be interfering slightly with the corner pocket. and uh, But I was afraid to say it because I've been wrong so many times where the angle was way different than what I thought it was. Uh, but that's a uh, unforced error. Now for Jason, his, his problems are the one and five down here to the right and then the two and the eight. He's He's got a few issues here. And... Uh, Maybe the five goes by that stripe. If it does, then it's it's the biggest problem. Then is going to be that that two eight, and I think he's going to try to take care of that right now. He's going to try to hit the seven and go into the eight and open up that two. He'll use a little bit of right. He he's pointing to the rail. He's going to go two rails with right English and come out and knock that eight out, and uh, hit the two a little first. But uh, that takes care of uh, one big problem, and uh, he's going right to the next shot. He may play the one in the same pocket. And evidently the uh, five goes by the 13, so uh, if it didn't, he'd have, uh, he'd have trouble getting out here, but uh, uh, I couldn't tell from the monitor that it goes, but I see from this angle it looks like it's easy, so... He's got to play this ball and then go up table and uh, play that uh, two ball, and then uh, he'll probably end up playing that eight ball in that side pocket we're looking at right now. You just go to the end rail, come back up either one or two rails and play the eight in that upper side. Oh, he's able to even draw it across. That even makes it easier. And you can see how great a position he's got here. and. Okay. okay, let's see. Uh, Clinty's falling behind two games. Let's see if he can make a ball on the break and close this gap here. He really has a hard break. He has a great break. And uh, that's one thing. Uh, yeah, you got that uh, one. I think he got the one ball on the side. So he's going to have solids. And uh, and he's got a big Cut problem down, here solid. with solids. Uh, that seven and eight on that upper rail. He's... Uh, going to have to get that seven out and like we mentioned many times on the on the stream here usually you want to go after the problems like that as quickly as possible so i look for him not to waste much time now he could uh, draw off the one and go over and try to tear that seven out or he could try to bump the eight and move the eight or he could just uh, play the one here. He's got lots of choices. Bounce up and get a good angle on that ball on the end rail and then go into him off the second ball. But I don't look for him to wait very long. Right there. And as we've mentioned so often uh, in the tournament this week and the one in January is uh, when you have a problem ball, you want to address that issue as soon as possible. And uh, there, he could have waited another shot. A lot of players in eight ball, they get in trouble because they shoot 
the easiest shot first, then they shoot the next easiest shot first, and then after maybe two, three, four shots, there there are no more good shots left. <laughs> yeah, and certainly no more shots left to break up the problem areas. Yeah, because you're limited. You make like he made a ball in the break. There's only six left, so if he he got he tore that out which was uh he really controlled the cue ball that wasn't an easy tear out there either uh, uh it's easy for uh, he could have tied up that seven or something else but he hit it right in the heart of the ball where he really got it off that rail and stuff and uh and uh, if you hit it thinner or thicker sometime, uh, you still end up with the balls tied up but uh, he really had great control going that far a distance and hitting that seven dead in the heart of the ball just a uh, fantastic control and uh, it's going to turn out to keep him in this match uh, if he can finish these three balls he's only going to be one game behind and he's still right in uh, he's still right in the hunt in this match appears to be getting in his rhythm here not too affected by the shot clock. This is first chance on the TV table. So we don't have a shot clock on the outside tables, and it's only 30 seconds. Okay, now it looks like he's going to uh, cut the lead to one for Jason Shaw, and uh, he's, uh, he's right in this match, Ted. We've had uh, most of the top guns from around the world, and to be in the final four, at 18 years of old, that's just, uh, to me, just phenomenal accomplishment. Let alone if he'd go ahead and win this tournament. Yeah. That would be. Uh, that's a tall order. <coughs> yeah, that is a tall the order. Is he's, uh, open, sir? Well, here's his chance. Uh, Nick, he's uh, dry break from Jason Shaw. Yeah, and uh, these balls are spread out pretty good. Uh, uh, I don't think he has much of a choice here because I don't think he can even make a solid. I think he's, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think he can make a stripe. I think he's going to have to take solids. And uh, as long as he can make this first shot, it looks like to me he's got it. I don't know what he's looking at this way. Uh, well, he did look at the stripe near the side pocket, but now he's uh, looks like he's going solids, as you said. Now in this, well, he run into the two there, so, but that's okay. The, the, to me, the, the key ball here are going to be this three ball by the nine, and then the one and the four are going to, they're blocked by the eight and 11, so he's limited. Uh, that pocket's out of play, at least for the four for sure, and maybe for the one, so he's going to have to be on that upper side of the table to play those two balls. And then, uh, you know, this ball is similar to the one that uh, ended up costing him uh, in one of the sets. He, he left this ball to the end and it ended up, uh, <clears throat> I like getting this ball here out. I mean, the two, I think you can get to that anytime, but this red three, <clears throat> If he if he waits too long, that could end up. Uh, yeah, he's not going to do that again. <laughs> he's going to go ahead and get that out of there. Ten well, seconds. Ten. Well, he's uh, he's unsure. Uh, uh, something about Extension. this three he doesn't like. Uh, I don't know if he thinks he can't get out of there. He's going to hit a ball, or whether uh, because of these four-inch pockets, he's unsure of being able to pocket this ball. Uh, I don't know what the which one of those things he's most worried about, and uh, and uh, but he certainly did a good job there. Now where he goes here, <coughs> I like playing the two. I like uh, going ahead and playing that two and coming down for the one, now he maybe will come across for the seven. No, no, he came down for the one. And I believe that he can uh, play the one and draw to the side rail and fall really good on the four here. And uh, 
and then he'd like to get an angle on the seven for the side and then uh, come down for the eight, but uh, I think he's gonna tie this match up here. Now he's a little straight in here and uh, I think he's gonna draw into the rail and back out and that should give him a really good angle on the seven to come down for the eight. It's always nice to bounce off a rail for position rather than drawing in a rail and trying to uh, stop close to the rail because this way you never end up froze on the rail, which always makes any shot a lot harder. Looks like we're going to have a tie game here, Ted. Sweater's delight. Yes, indeed. The kid's hanging tough. Four apiece and at Steinway Billiards, July 12th through the 15th for the Rio Rack Classic. Then the grand finale, September 27th to October 1st, the Predator World Series. He's got a ball down. It, it will solid. be a solid, so he has to pick solids. And right off the reel, the action goes right to these two balls right between the two sides. The Country six. playing solids. The six, and uh, it doesn't go, I don't think, in any pocket. So he's going to have to break that ball out. And. Uh, yes, sir. Unless the six goes in that side where he's at, but I don't think so. Okay, now he's played a pretty good angle here. Uh, he's a little close to the rail, though. I was going to say he, he could play that uh, solid there by the nine and come across and break those two out. Uh but th that's a pretty tough ball to pot there. And he looks more like he's going to play the red ball and try to draw into it. And uh, this is not easy from this angle. This is not an easy shot to draw back. It's easy to miss these two balls here. And boy, oh no, he can play it, I see. It goes in that side. So uh, yes, sir. I look for him to pull into the lead here if that six goes in that side. Uh, uh, because that makes things so much easier and having to break it out. Then. Okay, that's uh, nicely done. I was watching to see if he might clip a little of that stripe first, Ted. It looked like it was really a tight fit. No, he had it figured out. Look at the, the poise on this young man. Looks like he'll come across for this uh, five ball in the corner pocket. Ooh, he's getting pretty close. Remember, Me. you must win this set by two. If we're tied at six, there's not a shootout here in the first set. That'll only come at the in the third set if it happens. There will be a one-game tiebreaker at 6-6 six, six to determine the winner of the set. Wow, he is looking at three racks in a row and just when it looked like jason shaw was motoring towards the first set here comes the 18 year old albanian clenty kachi he's got to be a little careful he don't hit this ball too full he did i was going to say if he hit it full he could slid behind that stripe but uh he hit it just uh He's absolutely stayed in perfect line in this rack. And, uh, so Jason Shaw now finds himself and he's behind for the first time. And he's changing position. Uh, he's changed sides, and he's out on the string. He's going with uh, trying to adjust. And uh, he got that one in the side, too. And uh, uh, 
So that's a solid. So it's take what you make. No choice here. He's got to choose solids. Boy, he may have to play this too if it goes by that strife and that. Uh, oh, I don't it doesn't. think it goes. Sure, so. you're playing solids. So he's probably going to have to open up with a bank here. Or a kiss shot. He could kiss that two off the green one, but I don't like the way that's laying. Uh, he's made a ball, and uh, right here shows you how difficult take what you make is. He's broken the balls. No two balls touching. They're all over the table, but maybe it does go by that. I don't know. Or maybe he's playing a kiss on the green stripe. I s from here, it looks like the two goes. From the other angle, it looks like, uh, yeah, he's playing it straight in. He's getting the, uh, well, there's so many uh, names for this uh, bridge or rest. Uh, oh, he did have to, wow. That Now, a lot of people don't realize how good that shot was there. That That's just... Uh, Phenomenal shot there, because uh, if that one don't go, he figures to lose the first set. Uh, what a pressure pack shot, and that so hard to gauge how thick to hit that ball to make that kiss shot. He really come with a championship shot there. Yeah, well, that's typical Jason Shaw there. He, he picks what's best for Jason, not based on the situation or the pressure. He, he'll, he'll take the toughest shots out there. That's why everybody likes watching Jason play. It Fearless. Looks like, it looks like here what he's going to have to do, maybe I can't tell exactly, but he may have to draw up along this right side to clear the 15. And, uh, wow, this looks tough. Uh, from where I'm sitting, this shot really looks tough. Uh, it's pretty thin. And uh, he's got to be careful where the cue ball goes after it hits that rail uh, uh, he could end up easily out of position here, but he doesn't seem too concerned. Oh, he missed a green six. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I was watching the white ball to see if he's going to get a shot. Hey, Nick, you played this game long enough. You've got to make the ball first before <laughs> getting position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the older I get, the more I realize the most important thing is to make the ball you're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Positions, all these, uh, <coughs> you want to make the ball and get position, Ten. but, boy, if you don't Extension. make the ball, you don't get to shoot again. <laughs> first things first. Okay. So a chance now for uh, Clenty Catchy to win the set. This is almost like shooting at the winning eight ball, this 10. He's got to roll it a little bit. And, uh, boy, he's answering the call here big time. I mean, if he was a little weak mentally, he could have missed that shot easily. Uh, so he's got six balls plus the eight on the table to close out this first set, 6-4. Uh, uh, what a surprise when he fell down. Uh, now this one, he's got to turn that cue ball loose a little. Let's see uh, if he controls this cue ball to get position on the next ball. Uh, and he's going to fall really good to play this red stripe in the middle. And uh, uh, then he doesn't have to go too far to play the nine in the opposite middle. And then uh, he'll go down table and pick off those last three stripes. And then uh, he can play position on the eight pretty easily off any one. So uh, unless he misses a ball here, he's going to win this first set. What I like here, well, he may have to go down for the 14. Or, but I like getting that pink one, the one closest to the 7. I like getting that out as soon as possible. Because the other two balls, I don't fear much of a threat. But that pink one, if you get where you were going toward the 7, you might have trouble get in position but uh, I think he's got a real good angle here to play the pink and then he can either go for the green stripe or the orange stripe 
Nah, I bet his heart's seconds. pumping 100 miles an hour at this stage. He can see that uh, victory uh, is his for the taking here. And uh, wow, you couldn't have got any better than that. He just wants a little angle on this green one where he can just bounce. You see where he's pointing his cue. That's exactly the angle he needs where he can just pocket the green stripe and uh, come up table toward the two sides and end up close. Now he's reaching for this pretty good. Well, this is uh, really a big thing here for Clint Ikachi, for all of us watching, to see this young man hold his nerve. I mean, we, you're, you're kind of expecting early on, he was down 4-2, that, uh, you know, Jason would just motor to the uh, finish line here in the first set, and he hung in there, and I am just impressed with the poise, the composure, not to mention the talent. At 18 years of age, uh, that's more than impressive. Fell behind the hottest player on the planet, four to two. And he's won four straight to take the first set. And when he was 15, he was the national champion. Plays regularly on the Euro Tour. I think he's ranked, I think it's uh, 20th right now on the Euro Tour. It's his third trip to the States. So he has a bit of, ex uh, of experience. And Jason Shaw now breaking in the first rack of the second set, but nothing down. Yeah, it's amazing. If you look where Jason's breaking from on the uh, the right hand side of the table, every break he broke against me yesterday broke from the left. I don't really understand why he's changed because he was making a ball on nearly every break against me. And that's, a, that's why pool is one of the hardest games to win a tournament at because you need so much luck on the break. Yeah, Chris, this could very easily have been you out here today. I mean, it was, uh, you know, one shot here or there. It came right down to that exciting shootout. Uh, do, you, do you feel bad right now, or have you gotten over it? Uh, it's, it was my own fault, really. I, I had a chance to beat Jason 6-4, uh, and um, I, I threw it away, really. I just played a couple of poor shots. Um, I felt like I was a better player in the match. I felt I made less mistakes, and... I felt that the break w killed me kind of during the game, in the, especially in the first set. I lost the first set 6-4, and I think if Jason would have broke how he's broke here, he, he would have lost the set 6-0. Well, that's how it goes Lucky. in pool. It's uh, a game Still of millimeters. Open, Sometimes, uh, y you know, you... Uh, you just, you can lose an, a match. Your whole career can change just on the slightest uh, roll of a ball. It's amazing. Well, that's the beauty of the game, Ted. I mean, it's horrible for the player because one day you make all the balls on the break and the next day you don't make any and you feel like you're hitting the break Ten exactly seconds. the same way. Ten. You're hitting the same speed, the same angle, you know, and, and for some reason, the, the break differently. So you can see the cluster of four balls there by the side pocket. So he's got to figure out what to do there. Break that up. Well, I think the uh, the only real tough ball to get on is the three ball, because he's got the perfect angle here to make the four and Ten draw seconds. into the seven ball off the Ten. rail. He's just got to be a little bit careful, because if he hits it slightly wrong, the white could stick next to the stripe. He's been very, very lucky there. Very, very lucky. That's his most difficult ball on the table, and he's landed perfect on it. I don't think he played that. Ten. I think in the uh, other semi-final, Ted, I think uh, Carlo Biardo is beating Darren Appleton 5-3, I think it is, in the first set. That's correct, 5-3 on the outside table in the first set. So they'll be a little bit behind us because no shot clock on that table. And I think Carl Boys has just won his match in the quarterfinal of the challenge event, 9-6 uh, against the uh, winner of the first event, Ruslan Chinehov.
It was absolutely perfect there, Ted. Just roll the five ball in, come over to the side rail to play the six. One in the side, seven in the corner, which will give him perfect position on the eight ball. Yes, sir. Well, unless the seven ball doesn't go yeah. past the uh, green strike ball in the bottom left corner, I'm very surprised he's playing this. Yes, sir. He's got a great pace. He's not rushing, even though there's a 30-second shot clock. This is his first time also on the TV table. Beautiful stroke. We see him there for the first time there, Teddy. Uh, banged his cue, shaking his head. And there he does it again. He's not happy with something. I think he may have got a skid on that ball there. He's certainly not happy. It's like I said, the, the, the one ball really needed to be his last ball or the seven to get on the eight makes it much easier to get position on your final ball which is obviously the eight ball and now he's got to play a really clever shot Jacking up, that was always going to be difficult. And yeah, he's the first time I've seen him actually lose his composure a bit. Let's see if uh, Jason can feed off of that and uh, get something going here. Well, Jason needs to take these chances. He's uh, missed a few chances in the game, which is uh, unusual, let's say, for Jason because he's such a great potter, great player. You know, he's won virtually every tournament there is to win this this season. Just needs to leave an angle after this on the 10, just to push into his bad ball. Doesn't want to hit it too hard. Just nice and easy so it goes past the eight ball. And you see there, that's, that's not unlucky, that's a poor shot. There was no reason to hit it as hard as he hit it. Just, just slide it past the eight ball nice and easy. He's so confident a potter though that you just feel that he's going to smash this in the corner. Spin the white off two rails and then play the pink down to the bottom left hand corner. Oh, this is uh, this isn't easy but you still fancy him to make this ball. And the softer you can play this the more the pocket will take it. No. Wow. No, so more headaches for Jason Shaw chance to get on the board first in the second uh, set and now golden opportunity here for the young Albanian to apply some heat there you can see he's looking at the road map deciding what yeah. he wants to do and uh, he should get out here Yeah, you just feel that Jason's getting himself in good positions and then when he has to knock a ball out, it, it, he's just not taking any care in the shot that he's playing. But like I said, he's that much of a good potter that he just doesn't really care where the balls land. So on our outside table, Carlo Beato has won that first set over Darren Appleton. So Beato up one to nil, best of three sets. And right here, this uh, elementary eight ball, he's a tall lad. 
So this should be no problem. And there it is, one to nil. Because you would expect him to win the tournament if he beats Jason. Look at that break shot. He just slams that cue ball into the rack, but nothing down. Well, if Jason is to stand any chance in this match, he has to take these chances. And he must take care on, the, on his runouts. I mean, straight away, looking at the table here, I can see the runout instantly. You play the nine, and then the stripe that's next to the nine. Ball up the rail. The 11 ball in the side. And then it's ABC straight from there. But Jason's one of these guys that if he does get on a roll, he can put three or four racks on you in the space of five minutes. Perfect there on the 11 ball, Ted. Just run into the seven slowly. And he's controlled this rack really well. Even though it was an easy run out, he's made sure of the cue balls close to home. No, surely he's got to play the ball in the middle here. And there you see, he's landed the wrong side of the stripe and now he's going to have to go down the table and back up unless he can slightly drag the cue ball in. And that is what I'm saying where he needs to take care on shots like that. Well, not the route that you would have taken, Chris, but he got it done nonetheless. But that's exactly what I'm saying, Ted. He's, he goes about the clearance the correct way, the easiest way, so that you avoid all the trouble. Great, isn't it, isn't it break. amazing? But nothing down. Isn't it amazing, Ted? He couldn't miss on the break against me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but this is why I tell people at home and people who ask me questions online when they say, oh, pool's easy, you know, any snooker player can play pool. They've no chance, absolutely no chance. Unless you play this game full time, you will never be a top player because this game can ruin you in a breath. You know, I, I've played tournaments where you've been uh, broadcasting over there, Ted, and in, in Dubai, in America... In China, I mean, I played Shane Van Bonen in the World 8 Ball Championships in the semi-final. Oh, sorry, it was Chang Jun Lin in the semi-final. I remember that. And I was, I lost the match, I think it was 10-8, uh, and I never missed a ball. Yeah, never made you one played mistake. a perfect match. And, and, it, and he made two or three mistakes, and I lost. And you just feel like that wouldn't happen in any other sport. If you're the better team or the better player, you normally win. I mean, football, it does happen now and again. But in general, this happens a lot in pool. Well, I've seen dreams crushed in this sport on <laughs> numerous occasions. It, it have you're right. It happens all the time. It's part of the fun for fans to watch, and uh, it's it's a cruel game. It's great to see who can uh, come through in those pressure situations, and boy. There is no pressure like the pressure in a pool match when you're out there with everything riding on the line. Everybody's looking at you, and it's so easy to criticize, and you can't pass the cue to a teammate, and you can't talk to anybody, and you live and die with uh, it's all up to you. Everything's on your shoulders. Yeah, you're on your own, Ted. I mean, nobody can help you. You know, it's not like you can speak to your caddy like you can at golf, or you can speak to your teammates like you can at football. It's uh, it's a one-man band out there, and uh, you've got to take it. So you see any problems for him here? Not really. Um, personally, I think he should be playing the nine ball now, and then the ball that he's looking at, and the ball along the back rail, and the pink stripe past the eight ball. That way, the cue ball will be right next to the eight should he make it. One thing I have noticed about Cat, um, 
Clenty is his uh, his cue ball is very very good. It's never too far away and he's never too far out of position. Just need to make sure now that he draws his cue ball back to the rail. It doesn't matter if he lands straight. He'd rather be slightly off straight. But if he's straight, he's okay. Whatever you do, do not under it this shot. Perfectly played there. And you can't see too much going wrong here, Ted. And every rack he wins, it's just more heat and more pressure on Jason Shaw. Nicely done. Well, this, this is actually missable, but he shouldn't miss it. It's one of them where if you're rolling it, you're giving yourself a chance to get the skid. If you hit it too thin, it may not drop. But the way he's playing, I mean, this will probably go in the heart of the pocket. There it is. And the problem is you always get players who complain, especially when they lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's to be expected. Everybody's looking for a shoulder to cry on. Clenty Catchy now with the break shot. Dry break again. Nothing down. But he's not leaving anything easy for Jason. The first shot Jason must play here, without any shadow of a doubt, is the stripe off the nine ball into the corner, or off, off the orange. He has to play that first shot if he's going to run out from here. And he's not even looking at the shot, I don't think. Unless he can't play it. It did look from the, ov the overhead that he could play the shot. He can, he can certainly make the uh, seven ball in the side, then play the three ball off, off the stripe, but I don't think he's looked at it, to be honest. Is the six one a combination in the corner, Ted? Slightly unfortunate there that he didn't break the balls up as like as he liked. Still okay though, still a chance. What he needs to do here, Ted, is is draw the white and try and leave it on a direct line with the five, so he can cut the five in the side pocket, come off the side rail, and go into the six ball Ten or the one ball. Ten. That would be what I would be trying. Automatic extension. He could even come back across through the gap and play the five in the opposite middle. A couple of options here for Jason. That's not a bad shot. Just needs to be careful here because if he doesn't hit these good, that cue ball could scratch. Great shot there by Jason. Yeah, that worked Absolutely well. brilliant shot. And there, you see how he played the shot, Ted? He controlled the cue ball. He didn't smash into the balls. It was a really nice controlled shot, that was. Well, perhaps this will be a bit of a confidence booster yep. if he can get out Stop. here. He's got to kick it up a notch. Sense that uh, he's a bit flat right now, Jason. Well, Jason's one of them players at any given moment he could burst into like a three or four frame lead. He's such a confident player. Now he was making the one ball in the side pocket a lot of the breaks against me yesterday. He's made one, made two, made three. Well, here's Casey's got two 
solids down, one stripe, so he has to choose the solids. And he's absolutely perfect on his first shot. You're playing solid, sir. He can make the seven, run into the pink stripe and hold for the six ball. Luck of the draw, sir. And you hear him there say yesterday he was landing on every ball and today it's not happening. That's the shot there Jason's looking at. Nice and easy. Drop the seven in the side, cannon the pink. Perfect on the six ball down the cushion. Or the five ball, whichever he fancies. Yes, sir. Wow, he's dicing with death there. Why I don't understand why he's hitting that so hard. No reason. But he's perfect. And for me there, he needs to play the five ball now. Because it's so difficult for him to uh, play a good positional shot off this ball. He needs to cannon into the ball. He must play the five, surely. Well, he may not land on the ball. This could sc screw into danger here. And this is a frame winner if he makes this one, Ted. Yeah. Tough shot. Just bobbles in the jaws, and now. But he's played the wrong shot again, Ted. No reason to play at that pace. Give the pocket the chance. Play it slower. Play the th the one ball in the opposite corner. Well, you would have to hit it dead perfect down the rail like that at that speed. But but he, but he's played the wrong shot. The shot before, Ted. You know it's okay me saying it from here. I'm not playing the shots. But Jason's played eight ball for many 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 years. And you just feel that he's just so loose with the cue ball sometimes. No. Wow. He has given this away. Now, let's see where it ends up. Well, most people would think he's uh, played the snooker there, but he's, he's certainly gone for the pot. Can he jump it and make the uh, three ball? I think he has to play it. Yeah, here you can use the uh, jump cue. You can't use the jump cue if you snooker yourself. Well, you can use a full length plain jump cue if you snooker yourself. Yes. But you can't use the obvious, the, uh, the normal jump cue. Foul. Oh. Oh. Off the All going wrong for Jason Shaw. This is just not a good day. Sends both balls off the table. Well, it's complete opposite to yesterday. I mean, it's, you know, I don't really want to say it, but this is a, a really poor performance from Jason compared to his normal play. But he can't take anything away from Clint. He's played very good. Well, perhaps... Jason may have uh, been taking Clenty lightly. It, it's possible. You know, you see, you see go, you're over against a guy you don't really know much about, 18 years old, from Albania, and uh, you've got to take everything seriously. It's possible, but I don't think Jason's one of them players who, uh, who takes anybody lightly, really. I mean, you don't win what he's won by taking people lightly. I don't know what it is, but he is definitely off today, Jason Shaw. It can all change round, though, Ted. He's still quite a long way to go. And again, he's just going to come down to the brakes nine times out of ten. That's true. I mean, if he could get a few uh, shots down, a few balls down on the break, his fortunes could change very quickly. Yeah, all, all it takes is Clenty to have a couple of bad breaks, make no balls or scratch. Jason to make a few balls on the break, and all of a sudden, it's one set all. Well, on our outside table, Carlo Beato, who's up one set to nil on Darren Appleton, is now up two to one in the second set.
right here, Clenty Kachi, the 18-year-old Albanian with just two shots to go for a 3-2 lead. It's just a race to six in this set. And he'll be breaking in the next game as well, That's Ted. Correct. In the second set, Beata leading that one set to nil. So here is Catchy Clenty now breaking, trying to extend his lead. Let's try again. And at first glance, you th you have to say Jason must go for the solids. And there you see another poor shot there from Jason. Just really loose. Yes, sir. Needs to start bearing down on these shots, Ted, because this game's going to get away from him if he doesn't. And needs to be very careful here. Foul. Legal contact. Hit the 12. Wow. Well, as we say in the pool world, He's gone. <laughs> His head has <laughs> totally gone. He is. He's uh, he's out of it in this match. And uh, it's uh, dark days right now for Jason Shaw. This is uh, quite the surprise. We were talking with uh, Nick Barner, our colleague at the uh, beginning of the match. Uh, plenty catchy. You just had to figure with everything here, the, the, the circumstances, a semifinal, big international audience watching on their... Uh, live stream on Unilad Sport that Shaw was a massive favorite here. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if the bookies was betting on this game, Shaw would be like one to three, one to four on. He's just made quite a few errors which he doesn't normally make and I can't really put my finger on why. I mean, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure his father will be watching this game, Charlie, up in Scotland, and his dad's one of them people who who tells you exactly how it is. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't say lies or anything. So what's he gonna say? Well, he'll just say you played rubbish, knowing Jason's dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be honest, he's he's a hundred percent true. Well, you know, he's he's got to maintain a positive attitude. Easier said than done, but listen, he's even if let, let's just assume that uh, Kachi gets out here for two. Still in it though. Yeah, I mean, he, he's still got a chance. He, he just needs to take care, like I said before. He, he's he's so loose with the cue ball. I mean, I was known for being loose with the cue ball, but as I've got a little bit older, I've I've had to be a bit more accurate accurate with my cue ball because my potting was unbelievably good when I was younger but as you grow older and you make mistakes and things go wrong and you lose matches you get battle scars you're then wondering why and I've watched videos back of myself why I've lost matches and it's my cue ball as to why I'm losing and it's the exact reason why I lost to Jason yesterday at the end of the match I had him beat and my cue ball wasn't good enough you know I played a couple of loose shots and that's all that Jason's doing he's not really missing stupid balls it's his cue ball But Clentis played a poor shot here. He's got to play a little, uh, a delicate little shot here. Don't want to be bridging over that five. Just okay. Just okay. But this is missable. Even though most people think this is a big pocket, the one ball sometimes gets in your eye line. Oh, 
Nice. Played to perfection there. He's just uh, coming through at every chance. He's been poised from the beginning. He got a little rattled a few racks ago, but he got it together. And I think what has helped him keep it together is noticing that his opponent, Jason Shaw, has been over there losing it. And you made a good point, uh, Chris. I think when, when you saw Jason talking to Mika Eminen over there, that was a sign that he really wasn't focused. Yeah, I mean, a few people said to me after my game with Jason that he had gone in our game. And I, to be honest with you, I never looked at Jason once. I was fully focused on what I was doing. And I wasn't interested in what my opponent was doing. Wow. Can he get something down? Nothing again, Ted. Nothing. Oh. Table is open. <laughs> now, you know. I can't blame him for being frustrated. It's just uh, massive frustration for Jason Shaw. It's like uh, one of those dreams where you keep thinking you're about to walk through the door to paradise, and it just keep every the more the closer you get, the further away you get. Well, it, it's it's just uh, a nightmare. Now he's talking to somebody in the crowd again. Well, this isn't easy. This is not an easy clearance. If he takes the solids, the fives tied up, the threes tied up. If he takes the stripes, the, the orange stripes tied up. It's not easy. I think he has to go stripes. And he's not in good position here. Really needs to stun this nine ball in. Therefore, the pink strike will come off the rail and probably land on it in the opposite centre pocket. If he rolls it, I don't think he can land on a ball. He must stun the ball. Well, there was no reason to hit it that hard. He, he, he's hit it hard and hoped, really. And he's lost a turn now. Jason's got a chance here. All the spots are open now. Mr. Shaw, you're on solids. It's your option to shoot or make him shoot again. Yes, sir, you're on solids again. Well, I don't think you'll be letting him shoot again. <laughs> Perfectly there on the uh, four ball. You'll see him take the two, the one, the three, the six, the five, and then the eight. And again, they're a little bit short. The white needed to be on the bottom rail with a perfect angle. And you can see the way he's playing, Ted. He's just so lackadaisical on his shots. Yeah. I mean, look how bad that shot is. He's dead straight. I mean, such a, such a poor shot that is. Well, that, that, it's one of the attractions of, of Jason's game that he has this devil-may-care attitude sometimes. But uh, here you can see it doesn't seem to be serving him well. Well, It's a, a, a bad posture right now. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just frustrated, basically. That's, he knows how well he can play, and he's just not playing as well as he can. You know? But this is pool. It happens. You're not going to win every match that you play. Well, you're not going to play perfect every match either. <laughs> now, he's won his fair share of matches uh, by grinding it out. Is it an unbelievable play? You know, I'm not. I'm not knocking the guy whatsoever, but he just needs to take control of what he's doing. Talking about your life and uh, how you're. Uh, what are you? The only player to play. Uh, oh my goodness. There you go. Like I said, one or two are, isn't it? Can all change. Yep. Wow. He didn't hit that very square. Just look at the spots as well, the solids. The solids are absolute sitters if you can make it the first ball. In the kitchen, Mr. Shaw. Table is open. 
Well, if he can make the three ball in the corner, and he knows, he knows full well if he makes the three that he's going to win the rack. But he's probably thinking, I'm not playing that well, I'm struggling a little bit. Just roll this nice and easy. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And this is where he needs to think about it. He needs to play the five ball now. Play the five ball, the four ball, the six in the side. You're perfect on the three, you're perfect on the eight. Most people at home will be saying, well, it's easy. It doesn't really matter which way he goes. But trust me, if you play this 100 times, you'll get this 99. If you go a different way, it couldn't go wrong. Guess he put on an extender there? Yeah, he's, it's an extension, he just can't reach it. He only needs to roll the ball in, nothing to do with the cue ball. There you go, perfect. Roll the four in, the six in, the three in, and you're perfect on the eight. This is what we call connecting the dots, Ted. Making it really easy for yourself. So your cue ball's so close to the object ball, it's very hard to make the mistakes when it's so close. Keep it simple. A little bit too to the bottom side. It may be okay, maybe it'll kill the cue ball, but yeah, it can kill the cue ball there. But again, a little bit of a slack shot on the six. If he's straight, or the other side of the three, he's okay. Right, it goes in the opposite middle, he's fine. 4-4, four, four, Ted. Yes, it was looking dark days for Jason Shaw, but the Scotsman coming back and perhaps uh, a little crack. Oh, very nearly got the one ball down, but oh, and Ooh, just at the, the last six. second. What a roll. The six ball what goes in. What a roll. And Mr. look Shaw, at them solids. Solids. I would bet my life right now that he's not going to miss these solids. Your life? I'd bet my life. <laughs> That's how confident I am in Jason. You know, yes, he is my friend, and he beat me yesterday. But, I mean, look at these. Jeez. Play the one ball in the side now. Just run through. Guaranteed to be on three balls here. The seven, the four, and the two. Perfect. You probably see Jason play the four, then the two, then the seven, five, and the eight in the side pocket. But do you notice the cue ball control, Ted? His cue ball is right next to the object ball all the time. Really good. So just when it was looking dark days for Jason Shaw, he finds a small opening and it looks like he's gonna run right through it. He's got that pep in his step now. Well, I think my life's safe anyway, Ted. Yeah, it is. Wow. You got to win by two here. Just want to clear this up. You must win by two. Uh, but if it's tied at six, we will have a one rack decider in this set. The shootout won't come till the end in the third rack if we go to the hill. Clint has changed his break here as well. You know. And he got very unlucky there. He very nearly made two balls, but just at the last second, they got kicked away. Well, look at the, look at the solids. Yeah. Just look at the solids. If the four and the seven is a combination, which I'm not sure it is, I, I don't see how he can miss. It's all about this first shot.
Needs this to pull up. Oh, he's a little bit straight on the two ball here. He can draw it out off the side rail. I think the six passes are three. And I will say one thing, Ted. I don't think there's a better player at getting into the cue ball than Jason. He gets into the cue ball with so so little effort. And it must be a combination because I'm pretty sure he would have he would have uh, got rid of it by now. See, like there, Ted, I, I would have played for the six. And the reason I would have played for the six yes, is it's a free shot. Because you're still on the four seven combination no matter what. But if he leaves the six to last, he may not get on it. Oh, very close to very, scratching. Very, very lucky there. And now he's looking at the six, you see. Just needs to bear down, keep still. Pushes Q through straight. Oh, he's not going to be happy. And uh, probably should have gone the way you were suggesting, Chris. W without a doubt, he, he had to get rid of the six. It's the hardest ball on the table. And he's give uh, Clenty another chance here. Ten seconds. Again, a reminder that you must win by two. If we're tied at six. Just one rack, sudden death rack for the set. If I were Clint here, I'd be putting the ball in the middle, go around the back of the stripe and play on these hard 10 ball into the top left-hand corner. Just like that. See how he's getting rid of the tough shot straight away, Ted? And it's ABC from here. Jason will be kicking himself after that miss. Can you see anything going wrong here, Ted? Well, I mean, that, that nine ball, he can, he, he can see that does, he can get a piece of that? Yeah, I think the 11 ball passes uh, the first. Uh, nine okay. ball, to be honest. Right, he's going to go there first. The only thing can go wrong, Chris, is nerves, but he hasn't shown any <laughs> so far. Yeah, yeah, either nerves or a skid is the only thing that can go wrong. So just two more balls to tie it up. So somebody will win 7-5 or we're going to a sudden death rack. And if we do, it will be Jason's break in the sudden death rack. Well, he's missed a golden opportunity there, Jason. Played a good comp. Still in the game though, just bear down. Keep doing what he's doing. Great break there from Jason. Really good break there. Oh yeah, look at that, two solids down. He must choose solids. On solids. Hear him there say shock, but he's actually okay. Play the three ball, two rails across. Can he come in behind the two here? That's a good shot. Doesn't want to be straight, though. Spin this round for the seven ball. And 
and again another poor shot from Jason. If he'd have played the three ball first shot, it would have been much easier. He would have had the guarantee of the other, other ball. But I still fancy him to make this. Come twice across for the seven ball. Nope. Mr. Kachi, you're on stripes. Big chance here now for Clenty Kachi. Somebody's going to have to win. If you're going to win here without going to the sudden death, it's got to be 7 5. Well, you have to feel for Jason. As good a player he is, he's just really underperformed in this match. You know, you can count on one hand in playing this bad in a season. But you can't take anything away from Clint. He's, he's done what he's had to do. You know, he, he's up against the number one player. And he's performed really good. He has. I think we are going to see a lot from him in various locales around the world over the next few years. You can just see the difference though, in the game, Ted. I mean, he's perfect on every single shot that he plays. I mean, he's perfect on the nine here. He's looking to see what angle he needs on the 10. And he's making sure of every single shot what he's playing. I've been impressed with his time management. Yeah, this is the only table that we have a shot clock on. So it's just a 30-second shot clock. Yeah, he's so relaxed. Well, his, his cue ball, if you, if you watch the match back after this, Ted, his cue ball is perfect on nearly every single shot. He's very rarely out of position. And I have to be honest, I have not seen him play until now. He's been on the outside tables this whole time uh, during the Aramith Championship. But uh, from what I've seen and from what I know from talking to him, I was interviewing him earlier before the match. I mean, he, th this kid wants it so bad. I really think we're looking at uh, a player here who's going to be a star in this game in the coming years. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, a, a, certain, a certain top 16 player in the world. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of players over the last 15 years in covering this sport. Let's uh, see if he can pull it off. Well, I think if he makes a ball, ball Ted, I think he wins. If he doesn't, I think Jason wins a rack here. You just feel that something's going to turn in this game. He's got a ball down. It's a stripe. Has he got a shot at the stripe, though? Nope. No shot at a stripe, Ted. Mr. Koch, you're playing stripes? Well, he, he can play the nine in the top pocket. That's, a, uh, that's the only shot I can see. And if he doesn't make it, Jason's going to have a chance. If he does make it, you feel that the match is going to be over. could play a little tricky shot here, Ted, where yes, he just sir. clips off the 10 and leaves a cue ball next to the six ball, leaving Jason no shot. This is such a tough shot in the top pocket from here. I think he's 
think he's got a little bit lucky there. He may have played it that way, but... Solid. Yeah, missed it, but he didn't leave much here. Well, Jason's got to make this. Pot the seven and then bring the three into play. And he has a chance to draw the match up. Oh, yeah, he did have a shot there. Well, he's that gone down the table. That's okay. I think the eight ball passes a ten. So there's no issues there. But look how quick he's playing the shots. He's like he's giving up. Well, he, he does play fast, and, and it does even when he's playing great, he has the appearance that he doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, that's his, that's just the way Jason is. You know, he's an unbelievable talent. Perfect there. Now play a nice, clever shot here, Jason. Play the one and cannon the three ball. Just there. Not too hard, though. Because what will happen, if he hits it solid, it'll be on the five ball in the corner. There you go. Perfect. Now he's just got to hold himself together here, Ted. You feel he has to play the seven, really. And you can see that he's feeling it a little bit here. Just concentrate on the pot, nothing else. And he should make this. Good shot there from Jason. Could have done with drawing the cue bob back slightly, but I think he's okay. He can play the five into the centre pocket. Doesn't want to be straight. Well, wow. this isn't as easy as it looks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I fancy him to make it, but is he rolling it? Great shot there from Jason. Showed a lot of character. We're currently at 6-6. Six, six. One game tiebreaker to decide the set. Okay, here we go. Jason Shaw to break. Great break. Deserves a ball. Nothing. Nothing, and oh they're my. absolute sitters. My, my, look at that. Three solids sitting right out in the open at one end of the table. Well, He would have to develop the eight ball, wouldn't he? No, it, 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 it'll, it'll take stripes here, Ted. There's, uh, I, well, I can't see how he can miss. <laughs> I genuinely cannot see how he can miss from there. A lot of pressure. Can the 18-year-old hold it together? Indeed, he does pick stripes. It's basically stop shot, stop shot, stop shot. And if that 11 ball goes in between the 3 and the 8 in the corner, it's, it's going to be even better for him. And he's just looking at it now. Great drama here at the Aramith Masters, part of the World Pool Series. I think this is actually the easiest layout I've ever seen on a nine ball table. He's gone a little bit too far. I is anything easy and when it's a sudden death rack in this kind of situation? Well, they're all close together, Ted, so the white doesn't need to move too much. Don't get me wrong, yes, there's sir. still pressure on and the, el the 11 ball must go. He's called it. Ten seconds. Nice touch there. Yeah, just thinking a little bit now. Do I pot? Do I pot the fifteen and stun into the eight ball? Leave the nine in the side. Do I play the opposite corner? Ten seconds. Spin Ten the seconds. cue ball. Extension. Couple of options. 
for me personally, I, I'd be playing the 15 and just stunning to the 8 softly. That way you're uh, guaranteed perfect position. He really looks rock solid. You don't sense that there's any uh, nerves or cracks in his game here. Yeah, it looks, it looks very good under pressure, to be fair. Needs to be careful here. Wants to leave it nearly straight so he can just pot the ball in the middle after this one and run through the gap for the nine. Perfect there. And I think you can safely say that this match is over. Well, our match on the outside table is over. Carlo Beato has defeated Darren Appleton two sets to nil. So it could happen just about simultaneously here. Beato into the finals. Well. Well, I don't understand. Why, why not just roll that in really slowly? There's no reason to play the way he's just played there. Now, the cue ball's getting away from him a little bit here. I still think he'll get out, but in this situation, you're giving yourself a chance of getting a skid on the nine. The cue ball could bounce off the rail. Lots of things could happen here. You still think he's going to get out, but all he had to do was roll the ball in the middle so slowly. He got it. Bit of distance here. He should make this though, Ted. This for the biggest win of his young career. He should make this. Wonder what he's thinking. He's played great, to be fair to him, and Jason's uh, gifted him quite a few racks. Hold on. There it is. Wow, what a performance. From 18-year-old Clenty Kachi from Albania, he takes down the great Jason Shaw. I believe Mr. Beato two sets to nil so and holds his nerve in a sudden death tiebreaker, winning the Our next match in here set in a little while seven to six. He moves into the, the finals and he will play the Philippines Carlo Beato at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do not miss it.